Hey, it's Mr. E here. In this video, we're going to go over the concepts of congruency, parallelism, and perpendicularity. So let's begin with congruency. Lines with the same length are congruent. To prove that two lines are congruent, we use the distance formula and give the lengths as evidence. So if we look at this question here, are lines AB and CD equal slash congruent, why or why not? Give the evidence. So we got line AB here and line CD. All right, now look, the only way that you can prove that line AB and line CD with these coordinates here are congruent is if you show that the lengths are the same. And one way to show that the lengths are the same is by using the distance formula. So you can find the distance of AB and the distance of CD and show that the lengths are the same. So I went ahead and did that. That's the length of AB, radical 61. And the length of CD is also radical 61. So since the lengths are the same, Line AB is congruent to line CD. So this is the evidence. And I, I wrote a statement saying that they are indeed congruent. And I'm explaining why they're congruent, because the lengths are the same. So the question is fully answered. OK, so for congruency of lines, you're going to use the distance formula and you're going to give the lengths as evidence. Parallelism is a little different. Lines with the same slope are parallel. To prove that lines are parallel, we use the slope formula and give the slope as evidence. So don't confuse congruency with parallelism. So the question says, are lines A, B, and C, D parallel? So here's here are the coordinates of line AB, and here are the coordinates of line CD. So to answer this question, if they are parallel, why or why not, we have to give the slopes as evidence. So the slope of AB is negative 6 over 5, and the slope of CD is 6 over 5. So the slopes are not the same, therefore the lines are not parallel. The slopes are not the same. Therefore, the lines are not parallel. That's the symbol for parallel. OK, let me just make a little side note here. You might have noticed that this is the same example that we had used earlier. So it is possible for two lines to be congruent and not parallel. OK, don't assume that just because two lines are congruent that they have to be parallel. Congruency does not necessitate parallelism. Perpendicularity. Lines whose slopes are negative reciprocals are perpendicular. To prove two lines are perpendicular, we use the slope formula and give the slopes as evidence. So are lines A, B, and C, D perpendicular? Why or why not? So we have to find the slopes. We did that already. That's the slope of A, B. That's the slope of C, D. So are these negative reciprocals of each other? No, they are not. And since the slopes are not negative reciprocals, then the lines are not perpendicular. So line AB is not perpendicular to line CD because the slopes are not negative reciprocals. Okay. 
So here's a little quick summary. Congruency, lines that are equal in length are congruent. To prove that lines are congruent, we use the distance formula. Parallelism, lines with the same slope are parallel. To prove that lines are parallel, we use the slope formula. Perpendicularity, lines that are perpendicular have slopes that are negative reciprocals. To prove two lines are perpendicular, we use the slope formula. So what's one application of this? Well, this is useful in proofs. So here's a proof from the geometry regions, and it says to prove that this is a isosceles right triangle. How are we going to do that? Well, if you recall, an isosceles triangle is one in which two sides are equal. So I have to show that two sides are equal. And the right triangle is a triangle that has a 90 degree angle. So to prove that, I have to show that there's a 90 degree angle in there. And I can do that by showing that two sides are perpendicular. So let's begin with the isosceles part. I'm going to find the distance of JE and the distance of EN. So that's the distance of JE, radical 20. And the distance of EN is also radical 20. So that tells me that JE and EN are congruent. So now, since JE is congruent to EN, triangle JEN is isosceles because two sides are congruent. Okay, now let's show that it's a right triangle. To do that, I'm going to show that JE is perpendicular to EN. Because if these two sides are perpendicular, that means that they form a 90 degree angle here. And if there's a 90 degree angle there, then this is a right triangle. So here's what I did. I found the slope of JE, and I found the slope of EN. The slopes are negative reciprocals. So since the slopes are negative reciprocals, I could say that JE is perpendicular to EN. Since JE is perpendicular to EN, triangle JEN is also a right triangle because these lines form a right angle. Okay, so that's one application of congruency and perpendicularity. It's very useful when it comes to proofs, especially in the coordinate plane. Okay, I hope this video helps. Take care.